Hi, Lynn from Denver. Can you guys, am I like moving around in a jerking motion? Because that's what it seems like. So we're having a bad bandwidth moment. The joys of going live. I'll tell you what. <laughs> I started teaching at the age of 19 for my father at his store called A American Sewing Center in uh, Woodland Hills, California. So you can go ahead and take that, yeah. And so what I plan on showing today is how to take blue jeans and fix them with a little bit of style instead of just uh, trying to put a patch on it. And this is one of the things I was preparing was how to make a dream catcher and I started it and this is using a similar method. So that camera just completely shut down, Michelle. That's what is going on on that. Do you want to see if you can... Oh boy, that's not going to work. Never mind, we're not going to use that camera. We'll use this one here as a secondary camera. So, it's okay. Right now they're seeing me move the camera around. Apparently our really good camera that we got set up mm -hmm. is uh, not in the mood to be on. And I don't know if it got unplugged, if that was it, or what, but... Maybe tomorrow's video will be better. And yes, I plan on going live tomorrow. And I'm going to allocate more time before going live so that what you see is not us um, learning how to go live. <laughs> and is there anybody else commenting right now? If you, I'm going to try to share this with the group. And do you have any comments? Because I now can. Lynn says you were staggering, but now she's saying super. All right, it's working better. Mm -hmm. My, my ca I guess my computer just couldn't handle so many cameras, and I I'm in a screen where I can't share, so I don't know what's going on. We're just gonna have to upset some people today, darn it. And. Martha, you can hear me, but you're not seeing me move, but that's that was a while back. So, anybody commenting new? Am I really, am I frozen right now on the screen because it looks like it? <laughs> no? Good. Are you sure? So this computer is just not doing well. I wonder if it's doing some kind of a backup. Wouldn't that be lovely? All right, so um, in case you don't know, we do have a section of my YouTube channel where I have um, dedicated it to mending and I call it On The Mend. And inside of there you'll see me use um, different products to do different types of mending and blue jeans is something that a lot of us have issues with and you just don't want to ever throw away your favorite pair of blue jeans because they feel so good. And on that same topic, have you guys ever had anybody ask you to mend their blue jeans? Like, you have nothing else to do but mend blue jeans? If you do, hit the like button. And uh, know that we are doing a $100 giveaway today. And in the giveaway, we're giving away the Octi Hoops. I know, this is pretty exciting. And I'm going to custom make a presser just for you. So how we do that is you're going to tell me the size of your hand and we're going to try to fit it so that when you write when you use our pressers, it's not it doesn't make you sore from using it over and over and over again. Uh, just like when you write with a pen, the way this feels on your hand makes a huge difference on uh, how you will feel after a, an hour or four hours of sewing or piecing a quilt together. And um, so when we are at shows, I have people actually size themselves. And basically it comes down to what size glove do you wear? And, and I want you to go ahead and think about that. And while you're waiting, and I will show this screen another time throughout this as people come online, but go ahead and look through the presser's colors and try to think of which one you might want to have if you're today's winner. And the way to win is to share as many places as you can. I, I don't want you getting in trouble on any group, but if you know of a group where 
um, they don't mind you sharing live video feeds and you think they might enjoy learning how to mend blue jeans in different ways go ahead and share there and on your page and and the more you like and um, comment um, the the we then total up or tally up how many things you've done and about an hour after we go off of being live you will receive a comment or a message from me letting you know you're the winner and um, good luck to all of you go ahead and look at the presser colors and choose which one you want and say it in the comments because that would be another comment and another chance for you to win so uh, let's see how this goes so and I and I really want to know what you guys think do you um, Right now I'm teaching you a whole bunch of stuff and we're spending a lot of time on boring things if you're the kind of person that just wants to watch me sew. So what I was thinking of doing was filming me just sewing and have the screen just be on the sewing machine needle and you get to watch me do an entire uh, like embroidery like I did the other day where I embroidered a butterfly all by myself and you guys could have watched that but I didn't think you just want to sit there and watch me sew. So if you would like me to embroider a butterfly, for instance, or um, something more exciting, like our waterfall quilt, and you would be interested in me just kind of showing it without teaching it, uh, for the entertainment's sake, go ahead and uh, hit the wow face so that I can differentiate between what it is that you guys would. Okay, all right, cool. Because I think I might do that one night, you know, have a glass of wine and just embroider with you guys. So, good. We're going to mix it up a little bit. I'm going to try going back to that other camera now and uh, show people that don't already have the OctaHoops how to get set up for embroidering on blue jeans. And I'm going to go ahead and I am going to embroider how, um, the feather part of the Dreamcatcher with it just in my mind because I don't have any example to look at right now. And... We'll go off the chat camera and on to the next camera. Here we go. One, two, three. Boom. I am so sorry. This is why we like to film and then edit and then string it all together and then give you perfect, pristine videos. But live is fun because you guys get to play along. So I have the stabilizer attached to the hoop and it's really tight so you can hear the sound of a drum. A cute pair of blue jeans that I did for my daughter when she was a little teenager or teeny bopper and I couldn't find it but one of the things I did for her because she was really tall is every time she outgrew a pair of blue jeans I would add another layer of material so you can take like jelly rolls and add a jelly roll to the bottom of your blue jeans adding a really really neat look and then add different types of trims to that using our sequins and ribbon foot isn't that a really cool fix for when your child gets too tall and yet stays skinny and that was her issue and she's still skinny and she's still tall <laughs> And um, another really cool finish for little capris like these would be to add, and I know you're all going to be jealous with how much beaded trim I have in my hand, but you can sew beaded trim on the bottom of the blue jeans as well using our pearls and piping foot, which I'm going to be featuring soon on a live broadcast and hopefully we'll have all of this worked out. All right, so when you hold on to one of our pressers, you have to squeeze and push down to press the fabric. And so, for instance, if you wanted to fold your fabric over, you would just push down and press. And it gives you this perfect crease on the uh, fabric without having to use an iron, which is why you don't see me use an iron very much on any of my videos. I'm not against irons, I'm just against using it if I don't have to. So what you're going to find, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a design element like you see here. 
This is my own personal presser, and I'm sorry, but this wood has sold out and will never be available again. I am going to try to get a company to make something that looks like this, but uh, this is a one of a kind, and you will receive one with elements like this on the bottom of it if you're the winner of today's giveaway. All right. So if one of you did not see how I put the stabilizer on the back of the hoop, it is a stabilizer that comes on a roll. Oh, it says my microphone is ready. And I don't know if it's actually using it or not. Diane says, how cool are the bursters? No more burn fingers. Yes, oh, and... That's it. That is, thank you for saying that because you can use this right up against an iron. And anytime while you're sewing, if you feel like putting your finger out to push against the foot or something, just go, no finger, use my presser. And for you, this is the uh, Coco Bolo. This is one of our favorite ones to turn because we never know what it's going to look like. And I think Lynn, I think you know one of the one, ladies on right now, got the coolest one I've ever seen come out. We actually took it outside and took pictures of it because it was so pretty. You're lucky, lucky, lucky. All right. So say you want to do paper, English paper piecing or any type of paper piecing, you can take and fold your fabric using the presser as well. And you'll get an absolutely perfect, crisp press. So it's great for all kinds of things, and we're going to use it also if you're sewing and your fabric is is coming at the foot, like, let's see if I can get you to see this. So here's your presser foot, and the fabric is coming at it like that. You can take your little presser and just go like that, and it'll take it right under without having to use a stylus because the problem with those metal stylus is they can snag the fabric and cause it to like jerk on you and you'll lose that perfect quarter inch seam allowance. So once we peel back the release liner and we cut this this sticky side of the stabilizer, see how it sticks to my finger and and yet if I slide my finger across it it's smooth. But if I touch it, it's sticky. Oh my Tinkerbell is waking up. You guys see Tinkerbell? Oh, she's a little sleepyhead. She's always by my side. And I haven't introduced Chase, so let's do it. Because Chase is in here today. Chase, come here. Lynn's funny. Lynn is cute. Come here. Lucky me. Uh, maybe I did introduce Chase on one of the recent videos. This is Chase. Whoops. Up a little bit. Come here. Come on. This is Chase. And he's a noisemaker and a troublemaker and an adorable dog. Yes, you are. Yes. And he likes being on film. Yeah. I'm trying to find that sample that I showed right at the beginning. Oh, there it is. Okay. <laughs> so what I did to do this, isn't that cool? Diane says, hi, Tinkerbell. <laughs> <laughs> is I cut a hole in the stabilizer and then... At the, I mean, put the fabric on the hoop and then drew, drew a circle and cut a hole in the stabilizer and the denim and created a hole and sewed through it. And I'm going to go ahead and show you how I did that. Right. I have attached the blue jean to the stabilizer and it is stuck on there. And what that means is that you don't need a foot to hold the fabric down for you. And we're going to go ahead and somehow sew while you're going to watch. These are all my scissors that I have because you can never have just one pair of scissors. Be sure to check out our tools section at creativefeet.com to see all the scissors that we have. And for those of you who don't know about these, these are the Appliquick scissors and they have an interesting shape to them. And this is designed by my friend Rosa from Appliquick. And she also makes ergonomic and healthy products like we do here at Creative Feet. And what she's done is design a pair of scissors that gives every finger a spot to rest. And that means that you're not going to be using muscles and tendons across the top of your hand. So if you've ever gotten sore from cutting a lot, and she has two pairs that have this design. But know that 
I absolutely love my little pair too. So if you have a little pair of scissors, you might think that you have the same thing, but these have a micro serration on one of the blades that holds the fabric for you so that if you're gonna cut something really fine like that, it holds it for you. So you don't have to hold it with your other hand. So in other words, if you're not paying attention and you're cutting and all of a sudden your hand decides to drop the fabric, the scissor has your back. And that's why I use all three of her scissors. Another really cool way to our thing to do on blue jeans is to add ribbons and you can use our satin edge foot and top stitch with this and use our liquid based basting glue to put your ribbon down. And I'm gonna stop talking and start sewing a little bit. And I'm I'm gonna give you a look at the pressers one more time for you guys to choose which color that you would like while I move my computer to film, which is gonna be challenging and aren't I glad that I have something else for you to look at besides the camera moving around. So here we go. Hi everybody. <laughs> this is a very intimate view. Is it in focus good? Can you guys read the needle? So it's too bright. That means you won't be able to see when I film. So I'm gonna turn the light down. Okay, now you guys can read those needles. All right, good to go. These are the needles I'm using. Why? Because denim is not, it's not really denim if it's stretch. Did you hear me? So that means if you have stretch denim, <laughs> you need stretch needles. If you're using a denim needle, you can actually cut through the stretch fabric and make the stretch denim tear later on. So what I have here is the beginning of a dream catcher that I've decided to sew over a hole in a pair of blue jeans and I would have left the blue jeans um, sewn together except for I do open up the inside seam on a pair of blue jeans. Try as you want but when you have closed seam on both sides of a pair of blue jeans it is just a fight you're not you shouldn't even try to have. So go ahead and take your inseam and open it up, but you only need to open it up a little bit wherever it is that you want to embroider or do any kind of applique or any type of mending. And I'm going to show you a, a couple today. We got hearts. I love you guys. <laughs> oh my goodness. And I can't see here because you can. So know that my... You guys found a really cool pair of glasses somewhere, right? I found your glasses. Yeah. Do you know where they are? I do, because I put them away. Okay. She's going to give me glasses, because I can barely see in the dark. And um, I'm going to take this little handle here, and it goes into the hole on this. And it allows, see how it can actually pick up the frame? And what's important about that is it means that you won't be using muscles to hold on to the frame. Yay! Oh, I'm so excited. I got glasses. Oh, I can see. Wow, it's really amazing. <laughs> this is my glasses. Yeah, do you, can you tell I like teal? <laughs> well, this is a more interesting video. I've never done one like this before. All right, so I want to create one more uh, circle dream catcher there. And you can use anything that you might have laying around. I like to, if I'm going to make uh, the same circle many times as I make a little template out of um, st anything I've got actually. But Timtex is a good thing to use for making templates because it's higher and it allows you to draw on your fabric easier. Let me just go ahead and draw around the circle and know that I wish I could give you a better camera angle. We got somebody. I am. I'm supposed to be getting ready for the hurricane. 
Oh, you guys, those of you on the north or east coast, and those of you in Hawaii, um, I'm praying for you all. I was just in Raleigh, North Carolina, and I see that the storm is tracking toward you, and my prayers are with you all. I know that you said you're supposed to be getting ready for the storm. Please get ready for the storm. This will be recorded, and you can watch it afterward. Please be safe and do the right thing. Know that I'm coming to Virginia, and I'm nervous about whether or not I'll be able to come to Virginia. So I'm hugging you all through the computer. Too. So here I have my third circle of the smaller circles, and I'm going to cut that. And this is when I use my smallest of the three Appliquick scissors. And I just kind of poke through it. Make sure you don't have your finger behind that. And then just start cutting. And if you cut it into little pie shapes, it's a lot easier to navigate around the curve. And since this is live, you're going to have to watch me do all this cutting while I'm doing this cutting. I'm going to ask you guys some questions. Here we go. all of them. It takes all of those. It takes the belief that you can do it is the number one thing that stops anybody from doing anything because belief is tied directly to fear. So if you fear that you can't do it, you don't believe that you can. So raise your hand. They should have a raise your hand. If you don't believe that you can do what I'm doing and, and I am just spanking you all because <laughs> you can. You really, really can do do this, but you have to take, you have to first have the desire to learn as well as believe that you can do it. So, how can I compare this to something? Have you guys ever driven a car? Hmm? Did you learn how to drive a car? When you were young, you really wanted to drive that car, didn't you? Uh, wow faces for anyone who wanted to learn how to drive the car. No sound again? I'm not sure. Oh, happy faces. Okay, so what did it take to learn how to drive your car? It took the desire to learn how to do it. And you were young, so you believed you could do anything. Because when you're young, well, you believe that you can do anything and nothing will ever, nothing bad will ever happen to you. But now that we're our age, and some of you might still be young, and going, I wish she would just stop talking and start sewing. Um, that desire to learn is the number one, the second thing to you guys actually trying this when you're home. So maybe you don't want to do a dream catcher and a pair of blue jeans. But if you want to quilt, uh, know that the Octaheaps will be used for quilting as well. And tomorrow I'm going to film quilting, whether or not our cameras behave. And I'm going to share something with you that will make you feel like I'm one of you. Are you ready? My son Vincent is 33. He'll be, oh my gosh, he'll be 34 in February coming up. And this is what I made for him when he was a baby. And you'll probably all go, ooh, it's cute. You can see applique hearts and some piecing, and there's a cute teddy bear in the middle. Is it right side up or upside down? It's perfect. Oh, good. And they can see it? Mm-hmm. All right, my arms are getting tired. And now, here's the back. I never finished the binding. 
In fact, I recently washed it and took the safety pins out that was holding it in place throughout the entire time that my little boy was using this on his crib. So how many of you have not finished your binding and still used your quilt? Go ahead and hit the wow face and know that we are part of the same crew. <laughs> so I'm going to finish this with you tomorrow. And um, I'll, 34 years too late, but he's in a serious relationship and he might want to pass this down to hopefully some grandchildren that I may get one day because so far I'm still not a grandma. Okay, the uh, tools and supplies to make it easy is also very important. If you have a stick shift and you can't drive a stick shift, can you drive that car? How many of you can't drive a stick shift? So if you can't... <laughs> Diane took four years to finish my baby quilt. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I feel for you. Life gets in the way sometimes. I have a, my quilt. <laughs> Here's another fun fact for you. All right, since I'm, I'm uh, confessing. Over here. <laughs> you see that? quarter square triangle quilt hanging there. That's actually my quilt for my bed that I started in 2000. What year are we in? 2000. So it was in 2017. And then I broke my shoulder and the quilt just got, kind of got put aside. But what I did when I made that quilt was I did not have enough fabric. <laughs> so I can't fit it on my bed. So now you think, oh, maybe she's not as smart as we think she is. All right, so the tools that you need, you need to know how much fabric you need <laughs> to make a quilt fit your bed. That's a good thing to know. There are apps for that for your cell phone. And also you need um, to have a sewing machine or a good hand to do some hand sewing. I'm not criticizing hand sewing, but I'm going to show you some fun that we're going to do with the Octi Hoops, which is the easiest way of doing free motion of any method. This is kind of a neat view. You get to see my little toucan here. He's my helper. So we have this hole here and the reason why we don't need a foot is the stabilizer holds the fabric down. So we have bare needle and if you're nervous about using your sewing machine without a foot, know that there's nothing to worry about. And uh, the most common mistake people make is they neglect to lower the presser foot bar and if you don't lower it you'll get the bird's nest and all the thread falls to the bottom and creates like a, a mess that looks like a nest so if you don't have the desire to sew it you're like oh this is cool but i have no desire to have a dream catcher on my thigh on my blue jeans you may never do this, but if you have a child in your life that you uh, know can't go to school because her blue jeans have too many holes and, and you don't want to have to pay for another pair of blue jeans, my assistant Michelle's nodding in agreement. Uh, it's so cool to have these, these blue jeans with a big hole in it, but schools don't like you exposing your skin and now you have to go out and buy another pair of blue jeans. So what I'm doing right now is doing a straight stitch as everything we do with the octopus is pretty much straight stitch. See how the needle just goes up and down. My hands are not touching anything and the fabric stays down. So you're not going to get your fingers in there and you're not going to stitch over your fingers. So we're still on that list. List number five. You need to make it fun. How do you make it fun? You make it not important. This is a piece of a pair of blue jeans that um, I just cut off so I can do whatever I want with this after I'm done start with a scrap You can turn it into a pouch You can use this as a front of a purse For throwing bottles of water in for dog walking you know, Don't make it a, a big to do. It's not a big deal. It's just fun You're learning how to play just like you learned how to drive a car by getting your permit first you didn't start with your license you didn't start driving well, some of you might have. How many of you, let's go with the wow face, how many of you had a dad like mine and taught me how to drive by putting me on his lap? He did that on a really busy street and scared the living daylights out of me. Not only did he do it with a car, but he did it with an airplane. 
he put me on his lap and he goes you're you're driving the plane now and he pretended to take a nap of course I couldn't reach the pedals because I was shorter than I am now and I'm a really short person so this is me going a few straight stitches around uh, if you can see that well enough I'm gonna come a little closer and bear with me as I'm reduced to a <laughs> the screen webcam. Now that I've done some straight stitches around it, I'm now going to zigzag over those straight stitches by just moving the hoop in a zigzag manner. Which may seem harder to you than switching to a zigzag stitch, but if you use a zigzag stitch, you have to steer the fabric around in a circle and it ends up being much harder to do with a zigzag stitch. But some of you may be really good already at free motion. I also reduced the speed of my sewing machine just like you don't floor it out of the driveway with your car. You should not be sewing really fast in free motion and a lot of you feel the compulsion to do so because you're watching people on long arms and on videos and it looks like quilting is something you do fast or embroidery is something you do fast. It's really something that you should do in the speed that feels comfortable for you. And I forgot to keep my glasses on. Let's get them back on. So the other day I was doing this, getting ready for filming, and I fell asleep. Just like you can fall asleep at the, on the wheel of your car, I completely fell asleep while doing this because I got so relaxed. So it's a uh, beware. The side effects is getting so relaxed that you feel like you had a glass of wine and you didn't. Yeah, right, Claire, right? How many of you think I'm just saying it and it's not true? Go ahead and do the uh, thumbs up if you think that I'm just saying it. It's not. I'm serious. My friend Terry, who's paralyzed on her right side and is now left-handed, even though she was born right-handed, does has used this because you can do it with just one hand. So here's my my hand that I'm not going to use, and I can still stitch around as I'm going with just one hand looking not at the needle but a little bit ahead of the needle as you go and though it feels better for me to put my hand here just as you would normally hold the paper with your left hand and write with your right hand and you can't see the handle let's see whoa so the camera fell so this little crayon back here we had a little technical difficulty see this little crayon for those of you who walked up, that's what I say it shows. For those of you who just walked up to our table, for those of you who just entered the video, this is the Octahoop, the middle size Octahoop, and I have one handle on, and my left hand supports the hoop, and my right hand holds onto the handle just because I'm right handed. If you're left handed, you would switch it around, and there are eight holes in the octahoop so that you can position the handle anywhere that it feels comfortable for you. I'm not left-handed so if I try to hold this I don't my brain does not know how to hold it. I can't do it. So see can't do everything. And as we stitch around after we go around on a zigzag stitch I just kind of go forward and back and forward and back to create a uh, pretty looking straight stitch ish finishing edge around that and the fun is about to begin because we can now go through the hole. I wish I could zoom in for you. And I'm sewing across and you can see, oh my god, Michelle, scared the living daylights out of me. She dropped my phone. <laughs> Put your finger through the ring. And then that won't happen again. Are you getting tired? I'm, bo I'm boring, Michelle. <laughs> As we go across, let me just keep going across. And you'll notice that these circles do not all have the same shape design in here I'm going to be doing some type of pattern work and uh, we'll upload it um, as soon as I get the pattern worked out for this so that you know exactly what stitching to do to get uh, like this pretty little floral shape on this one here but I lose track as I'm going so as I go across now I'm going to zigzag across is there anything any questions Michelle that I could answer yeah. No, everyone's just having fun. All right, we're going to go across here, and now I'm going to come across, and we're creating an X. 
This is just one way of mending a pair of blue jeans. We've got lots of different ideas for you. Unfortunately, today we had technical difficulties, which will limit how much I show you. Uh, and this is something that I have shown before, so I won't spend too much time on it. Going across these openings is something that I did also to create spider webs on a, a, a shirt for Halloween. If you go to my YouTube channel or visit the Creative Feet fan page, that would be facebook.com uh, forward slash creative feet. You'll see a video in there showing you how um, to make spider webs on a shirt for Halloween since Halloween is coming up. How long have you been free motion quilting or free motion <laughs> embroidering? How long? Well, oh, that's a loaded question. Let's see. How long have I done free motion? I was 16 when I did my first free motion. That said, I have not been doing free motion nonstop for those many years. Um, my my belief, though, is that I can do anything if I try. And I would say that that would be the thing that would be holding you back from being good at free motion. You gotta you gotta first try. How many of you have never tried free motion? Um, go ahead and do the wow face if you've never done free motion before. And it's good because you'll all see how much alike you are. I have a black thread in the bobbin. Are we getting lots of wow faces? No, you got hearts and thumbs up. Oh my goodness, like. So this is so much fun because it's the right way to do it. Simple as that. It is logical. You can see that I am not, I'm not struggling. I'm not pushing down and moving both hands at the same time with my elbows in the air, which is the main reason that most people fail at free motion. And I'll show you further away. So this is what most people do. Elbows up push down and move both hands. I'm not that good at it this way, but I got good at it because I wanted to do it. So that's back to the desire to learn something must be strong enough for you to take the time to do it because we're all procrastinators. How many of you procrastinate? Let's see how honest the group is. How many of you procrastinate? Hit your wow face if you procrastinate. And isn't it nice to know we're all human and we're all Procrastinators, well, they're hitting the thumbs up. <laughs> okay, so here I've created a an X kind of look to it. I'm going to go ahead and take it off the machine. Oh, here we come. Here they all come. <laughs> yeah. So, you oh know, my. yeah, we all procrastinate. It's just normal. So, you see here, I just did, it's really, what's really cool is it's like a guitar string. This is really strong. Boing. <laughs> Sound effects. It's very strong, and once you do this to any material, because you can do it with not just blue jeans. I meant to pull this one off. This is this is me taking my time and planning, and I still messed it up. Can you tell I messed it up? How many of you don't see anything wrong with those four circles? Go ahead and hit the heart if you think all four of those circles look great. And I'm going to give you something else to think about. As I remove this, no, I'm going to do a little embroidery now and do some feather design while we talk a little bit more before ending this video. I'm going to draw a feather now and bring this closer so you can see. Does it restock or is she saying does it restick? Does it restock? It's repositionable. So you can peel it back. But this blue jean fabric has a lot of lint, so you probably wouldn't get a lot of repositionings on it. You can patch the hole with another piece of stabilizer. And this is a product my dad invented when uh, he released the Hoop It All embroidery hoops. So I don't know if you can see this, but I'm going to. I'm doing this upside down. So. See, Cena says she's sad because she came in late. I mean. So, Cena, you're probably sad you came in late because you wanted to win the prize again. <laughs> um, because you know that you can watch this over and over and over again after it's gone live. So I've um, done a stitch. I know it's not really showing up that well. 
and that's just some straight stitches there. I'm going to go ahead now and switch to a zigzag stitch, show you that you can in fact do that. And I'm going to go over that line and go a little bit narrower. Wow, magnifying glasses are intense. And then you just stitch over that line, going slow. And this is creating the center of the feather that I'm creating. And I don't do this very often, so that's why I got quiet, because I have to think. Now that we have a nice zigzag stitch there, I'll switch back to a straight stitch, and we'll go ahead and we'll feather out. And now it's just like drawing or doodling, so if you doodle well, I'm going to create the outside of the feather first. People not able to see? I can't see there, Michelle. You can't see the needle at all. You can see the straight line now, but that's it. Okay, let's see if I can. Can you pull the purple thing out? Oh, there we go. Is that better for y'all? Got a little bit of a runny nose. I'm sorry for sniffling. Here you adjust stitch length with. Stitch length is irrelevant because, as you see here, I'm now not holding on and the needle just goes up and down and nothing moves. So, stitch length is me. It's up to me and how fast I move this little crayon. And it's just putting your hand down. And drawing. Any of you that have the Octi Hoops, if you could share your feelings about it with other people, it might help them uh, not feel nervous about it. But we have a lot of very, very happy customers using the Octi Hoops and winning prizes. And you can see how I'm just doodling, just drawing. I'm not really worried too much about it because I'm going to come back in with some white to make it look more like a feather. This is one color, and uh, this hand here is not steering. This hand is steering. Let me see if you can see that handle better, another angle. Can you see that hand right there? This is what I'm moving and with my hand down. Now the reason that I'm good at this is because I'm holding on to a writing instrument and moving just my fingers, not my whole arm. So if you've ever free motion before and your elbows were in the air, you were using your entire upper body to stitch and it makes it, it's why you get really short stitches and really big stitches because you're pushing down against the sewing machine which is sticky. Any of you have ever had your stitches get really big all of a sudden, um, go ahead and hit the thumbs up and know that the cause of your stitches suddenly getting really big is the fact that you had a foot in the way and when you couldn't see the foot or you can't see through the foot, you then look around the foot like that. And if you guys all play along with me right now and look at this and then move your head over. You'll see that it seems as though I moved that, but I did not. So when the presser foot is on and in your way and you move your head around to get around it, what you end up with is um, a giant stitch because you think you moved your fabric and then you move your fabric over. It's a matter of perspective. I'm now going to change to white thread because I think it'll show up more. Or maybe I'll even go with a brighter color. Sina loves your glasses. They're cute. Do you like my glasses? This is... I have a $700 pair somewhere. I lost them. So I'm back to the readers, and I don't do well with them. But boy, I, I feel like something's wrong now. I, can, I can't see. Wow, I can see. Wear your glasses if you need them. That's another thing to add to that list. And... Uh, while I change my thread because I broke my needle threader, I'm going to have you once again look at the presser's 
to see which color you might want if you're today's winner in the giveaway and know that today's giveaway is the Octi Hoop set, what you see me using right now, and a custom handmade presser made by me for you from uh, these color choices. I'll see you after I thread my needle. So if you push down against something that is hard and the item you're pushing down against is soft and stretchy, what happens is the fabric stretches out of shape, which is why you get puckers on the bottom of your quilts. And when you push down against the surface of the machine, uh, you end up with short stitches and big stitches and it's it's uh, it's like taking a writing pen in your hand and trying to write a circle with your elbows in the air and both hands on the pen. It is not logical. And some people can get really good at it, but the majority of the population, uh, I would say that there's a very slim. Uh, it's so small based on all the times I've asked at shows. I have like 50 to 100 people around me, and I ask them to raise their hand. How many of you are good at free motion? So. Raise your hand if you're good at free motion. And if there's no hands going across the screen, know that it's because the majority of the population doesn't have the right tools to do it. But if you've ever written a zero on a check before, you've done it with your fingers, not with your whole arm. And the OctiHoops lets you write with your finger and just do that little circle. So. It's a sad thing when you don't see any thumbs up, so that's because you're all in the same group. Isn't it nice to know there's finally something, the Octi Hoops. It's why I look so good at it. It's because it makes me look good. I don't have to push down against the body of the machine to sew, and neither do you anymore if you get the Octi Hoops. Cena says you will stretch it. Yeah, you stretch your fabric out of shape as well, but this, because we're not touching the fabric, See, that's the key here. We don't touch this, and I also don't touch quilts. Tomorrow at 3, I will be going live again, hopefully with a better camera setup. And I am going to show you guys quilting. And we'll be doing more sewing and less talking. Blah, blah, blah. This woman can talk. If you listen to Claire Rowley, all she does is go blah, 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 blah. Lynn, <laughs> Lynn says creates tension in your neck and shoulders also. Yes, if you hold your arms up, and you do something for a long period of time, you will feel it in the back between your shoulders. If you have had your back start to cramp doing free motion, do a wow face. And now we'll see lots of wow faces. See, you're not alone. This is just basic science. You can't refute science. It's either a good way to do it or a bad way to do it. This is not a good way to do free motion. Some people can get good at it, but most people can't and it hurts your hands across the top. You'll start feeling burning. If you've ever felt burning, do the heart. And most of you feel that burn within just a few minutes of beginning to do free motion, even with the sticky quilters gloves. Correct? Thumbs up if you feel burning in your hands when quilting like that. And we'll go ahead and I'm going to keep sewing now because I know a lot of people want me to actually stitch and not just talk. This is me just drawing with this hand right here. If I can get you to see that better. I'm going to put my glasses back on so I can see it. Oh, how does it work with a king, king size quilt? Tomorrow I'll be showing you a, I think it's a, a crib. It might be a twin quilt tomorrow. So we'll see how well it can do in this tight space. And I'll show you how we hold the quilt without holding onto the quilt at all. Using elastic straps I call quiltlets. So here you go. See how fun this is? This is just a blast. Now if you don't feel comfortable going that fast, you don't have to. You can go as slow as you want. Isn't that nice? 
So many times you've been told that you have to go really fast in free motion, but our eyesight limits how fast we can handle something moving. You've got to be able to focus and think and decide where you're going. That's a lot for your brain to think about, especially after we reach a certain age. So as we embroider, we try to stay, I wish you could see better, as I'm stitching, I'm staying at the actual stem and moving out from there. And if I'm way out here and I come back, I come back over the same line that I went, I stitched out so that you don't see it. You can also do, it says my bobbin's almost empty and it's crying. So you can also do really big stitches by slowing the machine way down and just moving the hoop in a big movement, which is really, really neat when you're doing a lot of um, art quilts. Any of you do art quilts? Go ahead and hit the heart if you do heart quilts and Let's see what I can give you to look at while I change my bobbin. I guess I'll just talk to you. Do we have any questions, Michelle? Anything? Are they all just... Uh, Diane says uh, she has to take breaks from FM, which is free motion. Uh, her shoulders hurt. Yeah, so the other night I fell asleep doing it. I was so relaxed and didn't feel any pain, and that's because um, my elbows are down, resting on the table. Just to prove I'm right, play a little game here. Everybody, you're just sitting there watching anyway. If you have your cell phone, it might be harder for you to do this. But just take, even if it's just one hand, if you got your phone in your hand, like Michelle's holding, poor thing, the tripod. She's being a tripod right now. But if you have your cell phone in one hand, just take your other hand and push down. And on anything, your leg, your arm, your, your sewing machine, and push down until you feel any pain anywhere on your body. And then stop, because your brain is the only reason you feel pain. Your brain is sending you a signal telling you to stop doing that, or it will start to make your body change shape. And uh, it's not always fun to hear this, but I'll prove it to you. I do have a little bit of background in nursing, which is why I know this stuff. So um, if you've ever seen anybody walking around like this, it's not always, but mostly caused by sitting like this for too long. And even though you feel pain as you do it, you keep doing it. So your brain's going, stop doing that, stop doing that. And you go, no, no, no. And then it goes, stop doing that, ow, stop doing that, ow. And you go, no, no, no. And then it goes, okay, well, we like our muscles and our tendons to relax and feel good in this body. So we're going to join the vertebrae in your neck together so that the muscles can relax and not have to work so hard. And this is how our body works. So if you've written anything for any length of time, you've always had to push. Oh, boy. Oh, good thing that's not water. <laughs> you've always had to push down against a hard table and squeeze the pen. And as you squeeze and push down, your body starts to hurt, right? Your hand, your fingers start to hurt, and you go, oh man, I gotta keep writing. Any of you go to college before there were computers and typewriters and you had to write essays and, oh, your hand would get so sore and you just keep going, oh, so what, stop hurting, I gotta keep writing, and now your fingers are not straight. At a show I go, Everybody hold up your finger and show one another your bent writing finger. And everyone goes, oh my gosh, look at that. I got one too. Now some people's been to the side and some people's been backward because they push so hard evenly on the pen like that. And those of you who have longer fingers have had to squish your finger up like that in order to write. And you might have a overdeveloped joint right here and your finger may not be able to go all the way straight. That's one of the reasons I recommend you use our pressers. Whenever you feel the need to put your finger and push against something, always use our presser instead and you're gonna be protecting your joints and your hands. So 
Here's a, well, she has my cell phone, but I held my cell phone because my hands are really small. I put my finger underneath my cell phone like that, and now I have a bent pinky. It didn't take long, only 30 days of Candy Crush, and my finger was bent permanently. I noticed when I couldn't hit the button, or the right key, on the keyboard of my uh, computer. So we're all the same in some ways and not the same in others. We all need to follow the same rules. We all need to back to this. Boy, she just keeps saying the same thing over and over again. She has trouble sleeping. I mean, Susan has another question too. Wait, How wait, wait. Somebody said they have trouble sleeping after doing free motion? Diane. Uh -huh. Well, sure, because you're not doing it with the octi -hoops. If you're doing it with the octi -hoops, your arms are down and you're resting. And you, and you should get like, really relaxed. Like I do. I get so relaxed when I do the octi -hoops. This is what I choose to do when I need to relax is octi -hoops. So she using the octi I can't read that. No. Yeah. She says she's never touched her hers yet, so oh, well, I don't know. Time so, to get them out. Open them up. They're yelling at you. Diane's lost this, though. But then it says, um, Michelle says, what happened? And then Florence says, now what? With exclamation points. So I think so. Okay, it's because the sound went off when I changed the screen. Mm. Right? Can you all hear me now? You couldn't hear me, and now you can hear me. If that's the case, sorry. I'm having vol sound issues which I promise to have figured out for tomorrow's viewing. And yes, I'm going live again tomorrow. And, and I, you know, eventually this is going to be really fun and, uh, and easy, right? You know, because I believe I can get good at this live video. And I have the desire to learn how to be good at doing live video. And I just need the right tools. Maybe I need a better computer to do this and not have so much trouble. Definitely need to f work on my microphone issue, and I need to make it fun, and it is fun when we finally do go live and you guys interact with me, and uh, I'm taking the first step by being raw and going on live and having it not go well. I'm like, oh, well, I'm going live anyway. We're going to have fun. We're going to have fun whether we believe it or not. So this is the Octahoop kit. For those of you who own it and have not opened it, I'm not giving you a hard time, but I am. This is how you open it. There's a little flap, <laughs> and you just peel it open. Because they're inside going, open, open me, let me out. I'm so much fun. She says they're yelling, and somebody else says, oh, yeah, yeah, they are yelling at you. They're like, why'd you buy me if you're not going to use me? Diane, and then Diane. you take them out. <gasps> Look at how hard that was. Oh, it's so scary. She says, LOL, that's me. And then, there's a video inside, but I wouldn't bother watching this one. I would just go to youtube.com forward slash creative girl and laugh if you want at the name that I chose when I was a girl. Because I started my YouTube channel a long time ago. So if you type YouTube.com and you put that afterward, you know, like a, a slash, and then write that, you'll go to my channel. And you can also go to creative my Creative Feet group where you might actually be right now on Facebook and watch the videos in there. But there is a lot of videos on the octi hoops and I'm just gonna keep showing you more because there's a lot of you that haven't opened the package and that are, I keep teaching it to talk to you and, and apparently it is talking to you you just have to you know let it out of the container so I'm gonna continue by showing you what else is in here you get in the bag is the DVD and the handles and those handles are they scary do they look scary do they look like they'll bite you or explode or <laughs> they're really really little things so easy to use lynn says will do love it i hear it now <laughs> so when i'm at a show and i find out someone hasn't used one of my products 
I go like this, I go, hold out your hand. And they go, oh no, she's gonna make me do something. And I go, hold out your hand. So everybody, hold out your hand. Ready? Y'all doing it? Thumbs up if you're holding out your hand. Now look me in the eye and say, I promise. In the next 14 days, I will try at least one thing of the products that I've bought from you. And you haven't bought anything from me yet, well, hurry up, buy something. No. <laughs> um, everything you watch when I'm on live is available at creativefeet.com. Some stores carry our products, and if you have a dealer and you want them to carry our products, let them know that they can order from us at Creative Feet as well. We like our dealers. Okay, so back to what's in the kit, and this is part of the giveaway today. If you already have the OctiHoops and you're today's winner, um, we can switch from the OctiHoops to anything else on our website that is equal value. And this is three feet of our stick and tear stabilizer. And that's the one that you attach to the back side of your hoop. Lynn, Lynn says, I promise in the next 14 days I will do that. So you see this white right here? That is the stick and tear stabilizer. That is what you see here. It's not scary either, you know? It's really not scary. And then, to make it more fun, we have a stabilizer that you can print on your with your inkjet printer. And it's called Stick and Rinse. And all of these are available at creativefeet.com. Stick and rinse. Some people have thrown this away because they thought it was just some wrapper. This is not wrapper. It's also not a wrapper that plays music either. Sorry, my, my mind went there. I must be getting tired. So this is stick and rinse, and it's printable on the non-shiny side. The shiny side is a peel-off to protect the sticker part of the stabilizer. And this you can draw through with any kind of marker, and you can also tape this onto a piece of paper and print on it and you can print anything even your dog which I'm thinking about showing you by embroidering my dog Chase a picture I have of him or maybe Tinkerbell more fun to come in later videos but we gotta end this video at some point it feels like we've been going on and on and oh on here so these are patterns and on our website, you can print these out on our stick and rinse. And I have others on there. And if they're not there, know that they will be there soon. We're, we just released a brand new creativefeet.com site. So some of the documents that we had on our old Creative Feet site have not yet been uploaded. But we're working hard every day to bring you more. And Creative Feet Clubs are coming soon. Uh, well, my son goes, as soon as you get it designed. So know that I do have plans to um, have a private club where you can join and um, I'll be teaching you things that we don't share live or for free anywhere else because I have so much to teach you. Diane, don't leave. If you don't leave. <laughs> she wants it, to do her quilt tomorrow. I promise I will. I'm going to show you I'm going to show you how I finish my son's quilt. Those of you who walked up late. Tomorrow at 3. <laughs> California people were trying to figure out how oh, she, and, she came in late. Oh, and by the way, follow, go to create the Creative Feet group and hit follow. So, and then, and then uh, you should be receiving a notice that we're going live. Uh, I apologize. I'm still trying to figure out why sometimes it doesn't go live when it's, when I click go live, it just doesn't go live. And I watched all these videos and have been going to school to try to learn every day. And still today we had technical difficulties so I will for the first part of tomorrow be going back to school and taking my own little classes on how to go live for you guys and um, hopefully tomorrow will be a much smoother transition I plan on quilting a little bit on this and this was done using the satin edge foot and it is just our bamboo batting holding this fabric together. Nothing holding it together at all. See how the, the batting and the fabrics are all stuck to one another. This is one of the reasons that we offer the bamboo batting at creativefeet.com because you don't need to use spray adhesives or safety pins. So if you don't want to miss anything that we have coming up, 
you want to make sure that you go to creativefeet.com and join our newsletter. Uh, I'm going to end the video with all of my social media so that you guys can uh, enter it into your computers and I'll leave it up for a little bit before ending and I'll keep talking in the background but you won't be able to hear me so Michelle will let me know questions and maybe I can start I'll type a little bit at the end if needed if not <sighs> I'm sorry that this video wasn't uh, better and for those of you who think it was great thank you because I know you're out there my cheerleaders Tinkerbell has uh, worked very hard being my assistant and the two of us are gonna say goodbye now and I wish you all a, a wonderful night inspirations um, flooding in on things that you can do and um, remember all you need is to believe and take that first step and I'm watching you open the package open up your product and start to use it I'm here for you we do coaching you know I'm gonna be coaching you tomorrow and with that I'm going to put on the page that has the links for a little bit and then we'll we'll sign off very soon and um love you all see you tomorrow I thought I could click on the screen really, really well and fast, and I and I didn't, so because I can't see without my glasses. So where is that page? <laughs> I guess I didn't put it on there, did I? So bamboo be good for design. So I'm back. <laughs> And I'm going to address some of your questions now that I can look at my cell phone and know that if any of you asked questions while I was filming, I could not see any of the chat. I'm really not trying to be rude. And um, if this goes, if this is anything like our free motion video that I filmed, it took forever for it to go off the live feed. And people kept thinking, why isn't she responding? Because it's been a week or two or three weeks since it was live and I'm not really live anymore. Um, so, here we go. Uh, um, sorry, Diane, you just wrote something funny. Oh, I forgot to mention, next, next week I head to Pleasanton, California for the Quilt Craft Sew Show. It is, information can be found at, at www.quiltcraftsew.com also known as RustyBarn.com and they also have a um, YouTube group here on uh, I mean a Facebook group so if you do the at symbol at quilt craft so no uh, that you'll be taken to their page I believe and you'll be able to join there and be kept up to date on any of their shows I do like their shows a lot I was going to go and fly um, to two more states on the East Coast but it took its toll on me being gone and flying uh, last month I ended up sick for a week and so I decided to uh, do a show in Pleasanton California instead and drive to it it's more relaxing for me hi Glennis and uh, so one of the questions somebody asked is will it make will the bamboo batting make a good design wall it is the best for a design wall. It's so wonderful. It has the highest level of static cling of anything. Um, there's two different kinds of bamboo batting, but right now we only have one at creativefeet.com and the one we have is the right one to make into a design wall. And the bamboo batting is hypoallergenic, it's non-toxic, it stretches, it doesn't rot away like some of your other natural battings will. I know you don't want to hear that your batting rots, but it does and I'm falling asleep sitting here let's see yeah Diane I was in Raleigh I go to I was at the original sewing show which leads me to the next show I'll be doing after the 
Quilt Craft So Show in Pleasanton, California. And if any of you go to the San Mateo Show in California, know that that one's been canceled because they can't get the venue. So uh, I may not be back in California in that in the Bay Area uh, for a year. So it's your chance to come um, visit with me live and hang out in my booth. Yes, Diane, the bamboo batting has a really high level of static cling. It's clingy, and that's a good thing. Not always a good thing if it's a person. You don't want someone to be that clingy, but you want your batting to be clingy. And let's see if there was anything else. I thought there was something else that I needed to talk. Oh, uh, the next show I'll be doing after this, the Quilt Craft Sew Show is the original sewing show in Fredericksburg, Virginia. I will not be at the Virginia Beach show put on by the American Quilter Society. I will not be at that show. I um, will be at the original sewing show. So you would go to www.sewingexpo.com, I believe is their website. But look for the words original sewing. I was just in North Carolina, whoever just asked that. I was just in Raleigh and those of you on the East Coast preparing for the hurricane, um, my my thoughts and prayers are with all of you. I now officially um, must end this video. And you can keep up with our show schedule at creativefeet.com. Look under shows and events. Oh, by the way, that show next week in uh, Pleasanton, California, they give away $500 every morning worth of cash for you guys to shop with. And they also, uh, it's a free show, costs you nothing to attend. Yeah, it's a good show. My show schedule is posted under shows and events at creativefeet.com where you can find everything that you see me use on all of my videos. And now um, I'm actually going to end the video because I don't see any other questions that need to be addressed right now. Know that I'm going to count. It takes a couple hours to find out the winner of the uh, giveaway which in case oh we'll do that one more time for those of you who don't know I'm, I'm custom making you your own presser I have a small hand so mine is a small this is an extra small it's a little too small for me so we, we will probably be in touch and I will ask you questions to help determine what size hand you have and which presser size would be perfect for you to press for hours and hours and hours without injury to your hands and I'm going to custom make a beautiful end on one end for you, like mine is. So um, I'll ask you that as well. How many grooves would, how groovy would you like your presser to be? <laughs> and um, this is mine. This is the small. It's not available. This wood is not available. I'm going to post the woods really quick, and I'll probably lose sound. After the presser colors are up, you're supposed to type in to the description or into the comment. End the. It'd be better. I'm just going to ask you probably whoever wins, but it's fun for you to post which one's your favorite. And I'm going to end this. I swear this time for real. I love you all. And there's the pressers coming up. One, two. Three. Bye.